So this is five minutes with Simon Learman, Executive Creative Director. Hiya. Hello. Can you give us a quick summary of your career today? Wow. Um, left art school about 20 years ago, um, started at Saatchi and Saatchi, went to Ogilvy. Um, then I spent six years at DDB. Then I was Executive Creative Director in Wickham, London. Obviously, before that, I had a small agency called For Your Pleasure, which is a creative content company, which is relatively successful. Um, and I was at McCann for about six and a half years. What art school did you go to? Central St Martins. It was actually central. It was actually central school and St Martins combined. It's the first combined course, so yeah, it's really cool. Really good place to be. And throughout your career, have you worked solo? Have you always partnered no, up? I always worked with my my partner Brian Fraser as an art director. And um, there aren't too many teams in London anymore. There's still some notable ones, but um, we're very different about the same sensibilities. And I think. Um, we're actually potent as a team because we come at things from a very different angle, uh, but agreeing where the solution should be. And I actually think it's effective as the one in some instances, not always, but it works well for us. And have you been with Brian your whole career? Have you worked yeah. the way up the ladder together? We have indeed. It's um, a strictly business partnership. It's not, it's not a civil partnership. <laughs> Probably spend more time with him though, with, with family. Yeah, I mean, that's a part of the problem in my life, but so be it. That's, you know, it's a vocation in life and you follow your dream. How would you describe the creative industry in three words? Um, volatile, fascinating, and exacerbating. What advice would you give someone who's looking to get into the industry now? Um, probably don't. Um, <laughs> there are lots of other things you could do and um, earn more money. But seriously, if, if you are committed, then you follow your dream. And I think you really need to have a point of view, you need to have an opinion, you need to have... Um, and a, you know, a good objective appraisal about what's going on in the world. What's interesting about the industry at the moment, I feel, even though in the sort of depths of depression, recession, whatever you want to call it, is that um, it's a good opportunity for creative people to be strong. And I think the crossover between different disciplines is so blurred these days that you can come from a product background, you can come from a technology background, you can come from a pure creative background, but yet the opportunities that exist across the piece are so much greater. And more compelling for that reason. What do you look for in good creatives? Um, creatives, I think a sense of mischief, a sense of drive and damn determination to succeed because you've got to cope with rejection most of your life and good humour. I think the best creatives are those that can take a knock, dust themselves down, get up again and come bouncing back quicker with a better idea. Because often your first ideas aren't your best ideas and the more resilient you are, the more so that's my phone bleeping, the <laughs> for, more flexible you are, then the more effective you're going to be. Because it's, it's a learning curve, I'm still learning. And the more you learn, the more you absorb, the better you're going to be. Who's the best creative you've ever worked with? Um, worked with or worked under was, was John Webster. He, obviously, I didn't know about John Webster, the genius, and I had the good fortune to sit about three offices away from him for a few years. And um, Sarchi's talk about, or well, MC Sarchi talk about brutal simplicity, but John, I think, was probably one of the first exponents of that because you take a script that John had written, you go, it's quite, I don't understand how it's going to be great, and then you bring back a piece of film that suddenly brought all the elements to bear and all the ideas to life. and. What John was brilliant at as well as ideation and strategy was, was craft skill. Because to take an idea and bring it to life, you know, an idea isn't an idea until you can exist, until it exists and engage with it. And um, for that reason, he was um, deeply, deeply influential. And yeah, I'd say John was one of the most amazing creators I've worked with. Tony Cox, who was also a creative director, was probably the best creative director and department I've, I've had the good fortune to work under. What's your favourite advertising campaign of all time? Um, oh, man, that's a really tough question because it kind of changes. Um, I have quite a few cliches. Um, I love the Apple posters think different because they took a very tangential idea and made it relevant through the use of popular idioms and media. They took they made computers sexy through using popular culture. And I think you know, creators should always recognise that the way we communicate with people is finding things in popular culture that people can connect with. Align that with an idea, a particularly potent idea, I think differently, you're going to really cut through. Um, there's millions of, stuff, millions of things I really like. Um, 
the Guinness campaign, which I was lucky to work out for, for a time, I, I think it will go in the history of one of the greatest campaigns yeah. ever, Volkswagen, brilliant, Nike, brilliant. Um, I think what all those campaigns tend to have is, is an overarching idea of thought philosophy that allows people to go and riff on that theme. And um, those are the great ideas that endure, I think. What's the best brand you've ever had the pleasure of working on? <clears throat> um, I think there are a number of brands I've been lucky enough to, to touch that were great. Guinness was one because it has a strong philosophy in the background. That, um, VW, brilliant brand, brilliant products. Um, Sony, you know, when I worked on it, was a really strong global brand. I had the chance to work on Nike, unfortunately, or Apple. Um, there's so many great brands. UPS I worked on for a few years, and UPS is an amazing company, started by a bloke with a truck in the back of Beyond in America, and became this multinational organisation. Um, so, I've always enjoyed working in brands that have a backstory and a, and a culture and a philosophy and a vision, and um, those brands certainly did have. Okay, what are your interests outside of work? Um, there's not really much time outside of work for many interests, but I, I, I love all the things that all good crazies love, film, theatre, a bit of reading, um, music I go crazy for, cinema, as I mentioned film. Um, and I, I love, one of my favourite pastimes is walking around the city because I think, you know, take a city like London or New York or Berlin or any, any of those great places and there's so much going on culturally and I think as a creative you need to absorb what's going on the street and what's going on around the place. The architecture is great, the atmosphere is great. Um, and I do keep fit because I think the modern creators tend to drink less than one more, so I think healthy body, healthy mind, you know. And if you weren't in this industry, what, what do you think you'd be doing? Um, it's a really tough question actually, so I don't, I kind of fell into it, but I don't, I guess I should go back to my roots, I was actually going to be a pharmacist. Um, <laughs> okay. I was going to Liverpool to study pharmacy and I had a kind of an epiphany uh, and I went to art school instead, so I guess if I wasn't, going to be in advertising, I'd have been a pharmacist. Okay, good answer. Let's move on to a quick fire round. <coughs> FWA or NMA? Um, I don't know. Can Lion or DNA D Pencil? Pencil, that down. Oh, well, difficult question actually. <laughs> Philosophically DNA D, but I think if you want to be, if you want global, well, I'd say DNA D, but Can Lion, not too far behind. Tricky question, though. Digital design or graphic design? Um, I think it's all bullshit. I, I, I hate pigeonholes and demarcation. I think anybody that can think visually and use a digital medium to express their ideas, brilliant. I mean, I think there's a lot of bullshit. I mean, I'm going from the tangent, all right. I think there's a lot of bullshit about um, digital. I think digital is just, again, another delivery mechanism that ideas people use to, to communicate with. Creatives or soups? Um, well, I've always been a creative who can sell work, so I've probably been a bit of a suit on the side. But a creative I, suit. Yeah, but I think it's again, it's about ideas and transmission of ideas. I, again, I, I think labels are a bit tricky these days. Apple or Android? Um, Apple because I'm a bit of a tart, but Android and Apple because it's kind of practical. Degree or no degree? Um, Again, I think labels are erroneous, but I think if you can get yourself into an art school and surround yourself by interesting people, it's only going to help you. If that's the question, it's about <laughs> educational degrees, or was it about yeah. extremes? No, okay, same difference. Retained work or pitch work? Um, I love pitching. I think the adrenaline and the, and the the step into the unknown is what really excites me. And I think it's crazy. It's a blank sheet of paper that shows motivating, or blank screen, whatever you want to say. Um, but again. Is this a yes or no? Is it just a meant to be a quick fire around, oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, it's pitch work. <laughs> okay. Web or mobile? Uh, mobile. Independent agencies or networked agencies? Independent. Outsource production or on-site production? Um, much of the same. I mean, outsourcing is fine. Watford or Bucks? Probably Watford, but I've got a truck with that, but we'll talk about that later. Okay, and lastly, Don Draper or Roger Sterling? Oh, Don Draper. No <laughs> brainer. Cool, thanks very much. Pleasure.